Ooh, all right, everybody. Welcome back to another x Gaming video. x here today. Um, I do have a lot of news today. A lot of news broke. Um, I thought about streaming today, but I don't like to stream alongside a video I released that has to do with some news and or commentary in the gaming community. Uh, just so there's not too much content in the same day. I like to kind of spread that out. But however, with that being said, we do have a lot of news um, today that did break. And a lot of that is just purely Sony news, uh, PlayStation news in general, um, and Sony news in general. So um, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump to it. It's about time we get to the news. All right, so everybody, uh, what we want to start off today is the fact that Sony is now giving away free PS4 games as a Play at Home initiative has returned for this year. And this is according to Push Square's reporting. Um, after giving away Journey and Uncharted, the Nathan Drake collection for free last year as part of its Play at Home scheme to combat the coronavirus pandemic, Sony has confirmed that the initiative will return in the coming months. The biggest takeaway so far is that you'll be able to redeem a copy of Ratchet & Clank the PlayStation 4 version, uh, completely free of charge starting March 1st, 2021 on the PlayStation Store. This offer will stick around until the end of the month, at which point a new offer will already take in its place. Um, so from, uh, from the 25th of March, another deal will grant extended access to Funimation for new subscribers. What uh, was outlined today is just the beginning of what's in store for the play at home. In the coming weeks, we'll share more details on free games and entertainment offers dropping for our PlayStation community, says PlayStation CEO, CEO Jim Ryan. In these historic times, he quotes, uh, the team at PlayStation wanted to thank the community by giving back something back. These days, we would all uh, use something to look forward to and another reason to stay safely and socially distance, so we are happy to be able to offer a free selection of great games and some entertainment offers. So uh, with that being said, yeah, so it's going to take place uh, for the next four months starting in March. So pretty cool, you get Ratchet and Clank. I believe that was a PlayStation Plus game previously as well, um, but if you did miss out on that, here's another chance, and it's just straight up free this time. And then you're going to get a very nice discount on Funimation, so if you are in the anime, um, this is great timing because uh, My Hero Academia's new season will be coming out right around that time. So there you go. I believe you probably have to watch that dubbed or subtitled. Sorry, subbed, not dubbed um, until the dubbed version does come out. But nonetheless, if you're a fan of that stuff and want to revisit some of those old classics as well, or maybe the previous versions and seasons of My Hero Academia, there you go. So as reported earlier, well last year, basically, um, Sony did acquire uh, Funimation, I believe, right? Or is that Crunchyroll? I could be off there, but uh, some around the same wheelhouse there. But nonetheless, we get a discount. We get Ratchet & Clank for free, which is a phenomenal game. Uh, if you missed out on that, definitely try it out. Uh, we will be getting Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart as well this year. So um, by all means, check that out if you haven't already. Great, great game. So uh, we'll see what other games and offers they give to us the following months following months for the initiative there. So pretty cool. Just wanted to share that with everybody in case you did miss it. Some great incentives there. Um, next on the list, let's go ahead and get some negative news out of the way. Well, for those that were looking forward to Gran Turismo 7, guess what? It's been delayed to 2022 sometime due to COVID development issues. Um, Ultimately, in a statement provided to GQ, Sony stated that Gran Turismo 7 has been impacted by COVID-related production challenges and therefore will shift from 2021 to 2022. With the ongoing pandemic, it's uh, a dynamic and changing situation and some critical aspects of the game production have been slowed over the past several months, so they'll share more specifics on GT7's release date when available, they quote. Um, so this can be disappointing news for you that uh, has been waiting for Gran Turismo 7. I know a lot of uh, hardcore fans of Gran Turismo are pretty disappointed this is the actual next sequel, not Gran Turismo Sport or something like that, which was a really good game for racing simulation there. But um, yeah, um, as I called it, I, we're going to see a lot of uh, 
games being delayed, whether we want to be hopeful or not. It's just it's just the fact of the business and the fact of the nature right now that uh, this is going to be happening. Um, the only one I feel confident in, and it's it's just a smidge of confidence, is the Horizon um, Zero Dawn sequel. And I can't even remember the title of that. So um, I'll get to that and I'll mention that in here in a little bit. But I, for some reason, I can't remember. But the sequel to Horizon Zero Dawn will be coming out this year. Um, if anything, I think it's going to be a late release, like end of November or even December. I think they'll barely make the cusp of this year. Um, it's certainly not coming out this summer or anything like that, or even October, I believe. Um, I'd be super shocked if that's the case. And then I wouldn't be shocked if even that gets delayed to next year. Um, so that brings on the heels of God of War Ragnarok. We're not seeing that till 2022, folks. Um, as much as I want to say, oh yeah, we'll see it this year. We're not. We're not. Uh, there's just too much to do for that, and, and there's too much of a time crunch. And the uh, pandemic uh, situation is certainly creating a toll for those developers there, as well as other studios. So... Um, we'll see what happens, but we are getting a lot of, the bright side of this is we are getting a lot of games this year, right? Um, we're still getting Ratchet and Clank. We're still getting a lot of good AAA heavy hitters, the Mass Effect Legendary Edition. We're getting Biomutant out this uh, May as well as a few others that I've mentioned as well. Uh, so May is going to be a very good month, but we'll see how the rest of the year kind of portrays or gives itself. But there's a, there's a lot of games out there to be played in the meantime, and I'll tell you what... Um, it's just one of those things where we're just going to have to wait for, right? Um, and just see what happens there. But ultimately, that is the sacrifice that we have to make. We have to be patient, but there's plenty of content out there. So I'm not going to keep running in circles with that talk, but there's a lot of good stuff. So um, we'll see what happens. Fingers crossed we get Horizon this year. I think that'll be a great cherry on the top. But uh, as we wait, and even if these games are delayed... I think we're going to get a killer year next year if, if everything stays on track the way it is right now and we start seeing those numbers decline. Um, so let's hope for the best and we, we see a healthy uh, gaming ecosystem coming in the near future or near -er future. Um, so yeah, so Gran Turismo 7 delayed. Sorry about that for those that were looking forward to that game. However, it'll be here eventually. Um, Next on the list, I do want to go over this. I know we all seen this coming, but it was finally announced officially that, yes, they are introducing, and they, this is per Sony's blog, introducing the next generation of VR on the PlayStation. Um, so ultimately, today they said they are pleased to share that the next generation of the VR system will be coming to the PlayStation 5, enabling the ultimate entertainment experience with dramatic leaps in performance and interactivity. Players will feel an even greater sense of presence and become even more immersed in the game worlds And uh, once they put on the new headset. So they're continuing to innovate with the new VR system so that the fans can continue to enjoy the unique experiences that are synonymous with PlayStation. So they're also taking what they've learned since launching the PlayStation VR on the PS4 to develop a next-gen VR system that enhances everything from resolution and field of view to tracking and input. So we'll connect to PS5 with a single cord to simplify the setup and improve ease of use while enabling a high fidelity visual experience. So uh, just to go on real quick is one of the innovations we're excited about is our new VR controller, which will incorporate some of the key features found in the DualSense wireless controller, which is pretty cool, um, along with a focus on great ergonomics. That's just one of the examples of future-proof technology we're developing to match our vision for a whole new generation of VR games and experiences. Apologies there. Um, yeah, so the biggest caveat here is, what did they say? They have a cord. So that is much, much better than what they have currently with the PlayStation VR headset. The reason why I didn't stick with it a lot more than I would like to have because it is a fun little deal. It's fun to play in VR, especially for quick spurts, but when you're hooking it up, multiple cords in the back, multiple cords in the front, the cord's heavy, you're tethered, this and that. You have an extra additional box you had to put out there. Um, hopefully this just one cord goes into the system. I wish it was wireless. I know the Oculus is wireless, so why can't this be? Um, maybe there's a reason behind it. Maybe we'll get sharper 
visuals, hopefully. Maybe there's a reason behind that um, because it is certainly Bluetooth capable like the Oculus could and would be as well as some other iterations out there. So i um, excited to hear about the controllers to having that haptic feedback type of deal that the DualSense would have. So that will be super immersive because it's already very immersive with the haptic feedback on these PS5 DualSense controllers. So again, if you haven't put your hands in test on that, I can attest to that. But once you do, you'll be blown away. Um, so we'll see what happens. Um, obviously, it isn't coming out this year. They say probably next year. Again, with the delays, I'm thinking 2023 sometime. Um, and that also depends on the production of the PlayStation 5. They're not going to release the VR headset without having a lot of models and consoles out there. That's not going to happen. Um, there's just no way. It would, they'll be shooting themselves in the foot. Um, or maybe not. Maybe if it is released in 2022, it'll allow for them to provide enough VR headsets for those that want them because there's still not that many consoles that'll be out there. But they are supposed to be upping that uh, productivity um, month over month, as we just heard today as well. Just a little bit of tidbit there of news that I did find out. So um, hopefully in the coming months, it'll be easier and easier to pick a PlayStation 5 up for you guys. And uh, hopefully get your hands on one for those that have missed out so far. It is a phenomenal system. Go ahead and check my previous videos for some feedback and my hands-on reviews after a few months of playing with this thing. So anyway, PlayStation VR 2, it's coming. Um, let me know what you think in the comments below. I'd like to know if you're interested or if you're not. Um, I am. I am if it's more of ease to use. So I um, definitely have my eye on that. So we'll see what happens. Uh, we definitely need some games that'll pique my interest that I, I want to play, like the Astro Bot or something like that. So, all right. And that moves us on to the last piece of news for the day. And guess what? More PlayStation games are coming to the PC. The next game on that list is Days Gone. Super happy that that's actually, that that's actually going to PC because those that have just not had a console to play this game on. My favorite game of the year that it did come out, which was a couple years ago. Um, but ultimately, I'll break it down here, and this is, of course, per push square as well. Um, so, Sony has shown interest in bringing some of the exclusive titles to the PC market, and it did so last year with Horizon Zero Dawn. So, apparently, Deacon St. John's post-apocalyptic adventure is next on the docket. What's perhaps more interesting, though, is how it's confirmed. The language used suggests Days Gone will be far from the last PlayStation-exclusive game to be ported to PC. Duh. Um, what about PlayStation games on PC, it states uh, in a quote. A whole slate of them is on the way, starting with Days Gone this spring, reads GQ's piece. A whole slate of PlayStation games, you say? The interview elaborates on Sony's stance with regards to this, and Jim Ryan does explain that the decision to release the PlayStation titles on PC is fairly straightforward because it's easier never to bring the games to a new audience and the quality of the company's IP has grown over the last few years. Uh, Ryan does go on to talk about the reaction to Horizon's PC release. Firstly, in terms of the straightforward success of the activity of publishing the game on PC, people liked it and they bought it, he says. Again, duh. <laughs> um, he also states that there was no massive adverse reaction to it from the community, which is probably true true in a broader stroke or strokes. Um, so obviously this won't be the last, but Days Gone is coming, um, and that's fine. I think as a business standpoint, this is fine. In my previous videos, if you've been following along, this is the exact strategy that needs to happen. Um, with... with Microsoft and Xbox and all that, you're, you're having simultaneous releases on the PC. And that just, it doesn't, making, it doesn't make a compelling argument to buy the Xbox console when you're talking about a gaming standpoint. If you want a console, you've already made up in your mind that you want a console for a reason. Whether you have a family, it's easier to game share, it's just a simple plug and play because it is. Um, and it's less expensive, so you have some caveats there. But if you're if you're a PC gamer already, or you're a PlayStation gamer, or you're a Nintendo gamer, you need a reason to buy that Xbox console, especially if you already own a PC or you plan on buying a PC. What is the point of getting that console? Um, because you you just have the ability to get it, play it in a better situation. Again, they also have 
the the cloud streaming service for them right now with Game Pass as well. Um, so it just it just makes for that compelling argument. But anyway, to circle back around to the PlayStation side of things, it's smart because it's not limiting the communities not playing the game, but they are making you wait about two years, if not more. Um, God of War still not on PC, still hasn't come there. There's rumors. I know it's going to head there eventually, but I, for one, would not want to wait two to four years to play Horizon Zero Dawn, Days Gone, The Last of Us, God of War, Final Fantasy VII uh, Remake, and on and on and on. Um, I, I want to play those games right away. When that, when that feeling's fresh, it's brand new, the hype is there, it's real. So as a business strategy, that makes the most sense. You're making killer sales off the hype and the day one releases. And the reason the must-have selection of AAA games, the system sellers, that's why you get that. That's why you have the games. Now, two years later, three years later, four years later, you have them coming on to the PC format, and you're just making more money because of licensing and this and that. It's perfect because you're still appeasing the PlayStation community by saying, hey, You get this way early, worst case scenario, way early, and you still get to play it. You get to play it in our community. There's lots of caveats for the PlayStation. You have the DualSense. You have this. You have that. You have PlayStation Plus. You have the free games. The games are usually great. I can go on and on. But there's a lot of reasons to own that PlayStation system. There's there's a lot of reasons to own a Nintendo Switch. They have the games. They have the content that you can't get anywhere else. You can't. For the most part, right? Um, You have those first party exclusives. There's a reason to get that. Um, So it just makes the most sense to me. But I know Microsoft is in a different direction. This isn't a bashing video of Microsoft. It's just I'm talking in a business strategy point of view. It just makes the most sense. And I think it would make sense if Microsoft did that, right? Just keep, just keep, even if you want to keep it for a year, give your community, your hardcore fans, a reason. To be like, yes, this is why I have the Xbox system. I'm playing Infinite, Halo Infinite, right now. And I get to play it for a year. Sorry, PC guys. Sorry, anybody else. You don't get to play this until a year. Or you're going to have to buy this console. It makes the most sense to me. Yes, do you get the money out of the gate right away if you put it on multiple platforms or whatever the case is. But man... Invest in your console, invest in your community, and Game Pass is a wonderful thing. But it's it's making it so available to everybody, and I'm sure you make money to it at some point. I don't know the logistics behind it. I really don't. But, uh, you know, it's there. But that, that's that's a rant. But anyways, um, so Days Gone's coming. Happy that others get to finally play this. Again, one of my favorite games out there. Um, but we'll go ahead and wrap the video up, guys. That was a bit of news there. So um, let me know your thoughts, opinions below. Um, be sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on those post notifications so you don't miss a video for the news commentary or any other streams that I've been happening to have. So um, we've had more and more uh, people coming in, hopping in for the stream. So I appreciate that. The streaming community is, is starting to grow and it's a lot of fun. And I'm on a road to platinum, the Cuphead I just need to beat every boss on Expert. So I will be doing that tomorrow evening at some point. So turn on those notifications if you want to follow along. Um, I don't think it'll take more than another week to kind of plow through those bosses, I hope. Fingers crossed. Um, But yeah, so I appreciate everybody's support as well. Anybody that's been following along, thank you so, so much. The community has been so great so far, and we're uh, increasing and steadily growing. So thank you again. Um, and leave me your thoughts below. Like I've been saying, I'd love to hear from you. I would love to respond from you or to you, and uh, we'll go ahead and wrap that up. So again, have a great rest of your Tuesday, and until then, we'll see you on the next X-Fault Gaming video. Take care.